Want a small town with tech jobs and a future? Keep watching. These days, Tech Hub doesn't just mean glass towers in San Francisco and kombucha on tap. It also means cow pastures with fiber optics, old mill towns full of server racks, and places where the biggest skyscraper is still the local water tower. Here are 10 ruralish U.S. towns where data centers, chip factories, and tech campuses are quietly turning sleepy communities into the next generation of Silicon Valley, with more pickup trucks and fewer scooters. Let's take a look. Number 10, Prineville, Oregon. From timber town to Facebook server farm. Prineville used to be your classic western timber town. Logging trucks, rodeos, and a downtown that looked like it hadn't changed since Eisenhower scared the crap out of the country with his partying message. Then Facebook showed up, followed by Apple, and suddenly this little city of about 10,000 people in Crook County, Oregon, became one of the most important back rooms of the internet. Facebook opened the first data center in 2011 and has expanded so much that Prineville Pineville is on track to host the company's largest U.S. data center campus. Apple followed with its own facility. Together, the data centers went from employing around 160 people in 2017 to about 320 direct jobs a few years later, plus waves of construction gigs and contract work. Now, data centers normally don't hire a whole bunch of people. They're huge buildings, but there's a lot of supporting jobs that, that keep the facility going. So it definitely brings money into the community, not as much as you'd expect from a big campus and big building. But for locals in Prineville, it meant textile paychecks in places where the nearest big city is Bend. Housing demand spiked, rents climbed, and a town that once depended on timber is now arguing about things like server cooling, electricity demand, and whether your neighbor is a cowboy or a cloud engineer. The trade-off? Better jobs and more investment, but also a tighter housing market and infrastructure playing catch up. If you move here, your coworkers might be a mix of old school ranch kids and people who used to work in Portland tech and decided that they'd rather debug servers in a place where they can go fishing after work. Now, if you do want to move here, the prices have gone up over the last few years or last decade, I should say, but still the average home value is 425,000 right now in late 2025, which is still well below the national average. Number nine, the Dalles, Oregon. Columbia River, hydropower, and a giant Google box. Drive along the Columbia River Gorge and you'll pass the Dalles, a small city roughly of about 16,000 people with grain elevators and a massive Google data center complex. Google built the first data center here in the mid-2000s to take advantage of the cheap hydropower and cool desert air, and it's been expanding ever since. One investigation found that Google's data center was using about 350 million gallons of water a year, about a quarter of what the city's overall use is, just to keep the servers from melting down and us all losing our data. Economically, the place is getting pulled into a digital age, whether it likes it or not. The Dalles has seen new tech jobs, contracts for local businesses, and infrastructure upgrades, along with the usual small town questions like, how much of a tax break is too much? And it's weird that your quiet river town is basically the nerve center of YouTube and Gmail. If you move here, you could still have a house and watch barges crawl along the Columbia River, and then watch a World According to Briggs video that was probably routed through your zip code. If you do move here, the average home value is about $384,000 in late 2025. Number eight, Taylor, Texas. Samsung and $17 billion. Taylor used to be a railroad and farm town northeast of Austin with a population under 20,000 people and an economy built on cotton, cattle, and a little bit of we're not Austin on purpose. Then Samsung pulled up with a $17 billion semiconductor plant and changed the storyline. The chip factory is spread over 1,200 acres and is expected to create over 1,800 skilled permanent jobs plus tens of thousands of construction jobs over the build out. Local Reports say that the project has already helped push Taylor's sales tax revenue from about $3.8 million in 2020 to over $20 million in 2024. And it's drawing in suppliers and other tech-adjacent businesses all across Williamson County. Now, of course, nothing this big lands softly. Housing prices are rising, farmland is turning into industrial parks, and a town that once worried about Friday night football is now talking about funding a global supply chain. Some locals are thrilled, and others are wondering what happens when the property taxes catch up. 
Move to Taylor now and you're early. Today it feels like a small town Texas with grain silos and barbecue joints. In 10 years, it might feel like Silicon Prairie with a Texas accent and a whole lot of engineers trying to remember to buy cowboy boots. If you want to move to Taylor, the average home value right now is about $280,000, which is not bad. Number seven, New Albany, Ohio. Chip fabs in the cornfields. On the outskirts of Columbus, Ohio, you'll find New Albany. It was known mostly for upscale subdivisions and quiet farmland. Then Intel announced a semiconductor mega site here and then dropped a 20 to $28 billion investment plan, which turns out is one of the largest private projects in Ohio history. The Intel campus is supposed to bring in about 3,000 permanent high-wage jobs and roughly 7,000 construction jobs, essentially turning the semi-rural suburb of Columbus into a giant high-tech cornfield. Now, timelines have slipped on this. It was supposed to be open in 2029, then 2030. Now it looks like it's to be completed in 2031. But the land is bought, the incentives are signed, and the region is already gearing up with new housing, roads, and training programs. For Central Ohio, this is huge. For New Albany, it's like your quiet cul-de-sac just got told it's hosting the Super Bowl in the next 30 years. Local leaders are hyped about the tax base growth and new schools. Residents are watching traffic and house prices like a stock ticker. Move here and you're betting that cornfields plus chip fabs equal long-term stability. Worst case, you get Midwest suburbs with nice parks. Best case, you're sitting in the middle of Silicon Corn Belt. Now, if you want to move here, the average home value is about $612,000. Number six, Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Swamps, Spanish moss, and Google Cloud. Monk's Corner is a small town in Berkeley County, about 45 minutes from Charleston. It used to be known for fishing on Lake Moultrie and Pine Forest. Now, it's also known as a place where Google parks huge chunks of the internet. Google picked the Mount Holly Commerce Center for a data center back in 2007 and has been growing it ever since. The company has poured hundreds of millions into expansions and recently announced a new $9 billion investment across South Carolina through 20. 2027, including enlarging the Berkeley County Data Center campus and adding more sites in other counties in this area. Google's presence means data center tech jobs, construction work, and better fiber and power infrastructure for the region. It also means Monk's Corner is slowly shifting from rural low country town to quiet AI engine room with really good sweet tea. If you move here, your weekends can still be fishing and barbecuing, while your weekdays involve keeping the global cloud online. It's not a bad combo. Now, this place is known for great fishing on Lake Moultrie, especially for the catfish. If you want to be part of that sweet, sweet tech money and move here, the average home value currently is about $363,000, still well below the national average. Number five, Maiden, North Carolina, Apple's iCloud country. Maiden is a town of roughly 3,000 people in Catawba County, North Carolina, traditionally a textile and furniture region. Then Apple decided that it was the perfect place to park a giant data center to run iCloud, Siri, and the rest of your digital life. Now Maiden has one of the most famous server farms in the world just sitting outside of town. Apple's data center jobs include technicians, engineers, and infrastructure specialists. They often post data center tech jobs that are in the mid-20s to $30 an hour and up. You get a specialized role at a place like that, you get some serious money. And you're in the middle of North Carolina where things aren't terribly expensive like let's say San Francisco or Silicon Valley. For a region that watched mills close and infrastructure jobs disappear, having a Fortune 500 giant running a high-tech operation down the road is a big deal. It brought infrastructure upgrades and put Maiden on the map for other data centers and logistics players across Western North Carolina. Life here is still small town Southern. Friday night football, church barbecues, everyone knows who parked weird at the Dollar General. But your neighbor might be a data center mechanical engineer making sure your iPhone backup doesn't vanish. So if you want to move to Maiden and cash in on some of those sweet, sweet Apple paychecks, you're probably going to want a home. If you do, the average home value here is only $292,000. That is not bad for a place that's got 20-something an hour jobs to start. <music> 
Number four, Council Bluffs, Iowa. Grain elevators and Google racks. Council Bluffs sits across the river from Omaha, famous for rail yards, grain elevators, and now a sprawling Google data center complex. Google has built multiple facilities in the area over the last decade, and job sites routinely list dozens of data center and logistic roles tied to the operations. For a mid-sized city that once depended heavily on old-school industry and river traffic, tech has quietly become the new stable pillar. You've got Google technicians, third-party contractors, and support jobs like warehouse associates and logistics coordinators feeding the machine. Housing here is still far more affordable than most coastal markets, but as more data center jobs land and the Omaha tech scene spills over, prices and demand have started to climb. They're still not terrible. You get the feel of a blue-collar river town that just happens to be babysitting a massive piece of the cloud. Now, you'll hear people complain about the data centers not hiring that many people. And I, like I mentioned it earlier, they don't. They don't have thousands and thousands of people like, let's say, a building that did manufacturing back in the 1960s. I mean, nothing has the amount of manpower that it used to have thanks to automation and computers these days, too. But they do have some jobs they probably didn't think were going to happen 25 years ago. Now, like I said, home prices here have been creeping up, but it's so low, it's really not even noticeable. It's gone up 2.2% over the last 365 days. The year before, it went up 1%. And that gets them all the way up to the average home value being $220,000. That is nothing, especially when you compare it to the coastal cities. Number three, Hamlet, Richmond County, North Carolina. Amazon's AI bet in an old textile belt. Richmond County, homes to towns like Hamlet and Rockingham, once depended on textiles and apparel factories. These jobs have pretty much vanished about a generation ago, leaving empty mills and not a lot of options. Amazon has decided to change this county's future with a $10 billion investment in a new data center and AI campus. The project is expected to create at least 500 high-skilled jobs, data center engineers, network specialists, security pros, and support thousands more through construction and supply chains. State officials are calling it the largest investment in North Carolina history. On top of jobs, Amazon is promising major infrastructure upgrades like water, wastewater, and fiber improvements to the county that the county doesn't have to front the bill for. For a rural county of about 42,000 people that's 70 miles east of Charlotte, that's transformational. This is the classic old mill town gets a second act in tech type story. The same cheap land and low costs that once attracted factories now attract server farms and AI clusters. If you move here, you're basically buying stock early. You'll still get sleepy streets, modest home prices, and small town life, plus the knowledge that your county is about to host one of the bigger AI infrastructure projects in the country. The average home value in Richmond County is about $127,000. Number two, Evanston, Wyoming. High desert, big skies, and a giant AI campus. Evanston, tucked away in the southwestern corner of Wyoming near the Utah border, has long been a railroad and energy town with wide open skies and not much tech. That's changing. A company called Prometheus is planning a massive hyperscale data center just outside of town. Part of a network of these things, That'll be in Casper, Arizona, Colorado, and Texas. Rendering show a giant modular box complex at the base of the Uintra Mountains, basically an AI fortress in Sagebrush County. The project would plug into the region's relatively cheap power and cooler climate, the same factors drawing data centers across the Mountain West. The exact job numbers are still evolving, but hyperscale sites typically bring hundreds of high-skilled positions plus large construction crews and a parade of subcontractors. For a small regional center like Evanston, this is a big influx of engineers, technicians, and their families. Expect housing pressure, new restaurants, and a lot more people arguing over where to put all the new transmission lines. Move here and you can hunt, fish, and complain about the wind. Only now, you'll be doing it in a county that's quietly becoming an AI export hub. If you want to buy your own little piece of Wyoming in this area, the average home value in Evanston, Wyoming is $300,000. So what have we learned so far? First of all, the Carolinas are cashing in big with tech and so is the Midwest. And now it looks like with the last two on this list, the Mountain West as well.
And number one, Silicon Sagebrush, the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Nevada, Fernley's new neighbor. Out in the high desert east of Reno, the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, or TRIC, has become a global hotspot for advanced manufacturing and logistics. It started with big names like Tesla's Gigafactory, and now it's rapidly turning into one of the biggest data center markets in the world, with server farm developers flocking to Nevada's tax breaks and cheap power. Nearby small towns like Fernley are feeling the impact. What used to be quiet desert suburbs with long commutes and affordable homes are now seeing growing demand for engineers, technicians, and construction workers tied to AI and cloud infrastructure. Reports highlight that western states like Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, and Arizona now have some of the fastest growing data center capacities in the nation. The local trade-off is a familiar one by now. Better jobs, rising taxes, and more amenities on one side, higher housing costs, water and power strain, and a lot more trucks on the interstate on the other. But if you're a tech worker who wants a house, a garage, and actual stars at night, this corner of Nevada is suddenly very interesting. Move to a town like Fernley today, and in a few years, you'll be able to say, yeah, it it used to be a lot more quiet, and then you can point to the horizon where a row of windowless boxes are humming away and paying your mortgage. If you want to move to this part of Nevada, which a lot of people are these days, the average home value in, let's say, Fernley is about $388,000 in late 2025. All right, that's today's video. If you enjoyed this one, you'll probably enjoy one of the two being suggested right now. Everyone have a great day. Be nice to each other.